All right, welcome everyone. My name's Chris. I've got SF Custom Cycles and Restoration. Now, I've had a lot of people reach out. Why aren't you vlogging stuff? We love seeing builds, tutorials. I'm all for it. Uh, I've never gone through like the whole tutorial deal, um, but I do deal with a lot of two strokes, a lot of servicing, some suspension component stuff. Um, you know, I ride myself, I'm a paralysis survivor, and yeah, look, I have got a variety of bikes that I am working on at the minute, well, why not vlog it? So I've got the YouTube channel there. I might as well uh, get in and amplify some stuff. So today I'm gonna quickly go through, it's a partial tutorial on diagnosis or diagnostic to see where things are at with this motorcycle, then tear it down and obviously do restoration, which restoration holds a lot of good quality in it. You know, doing your typical diagnostics measuring, looking at components, wear and tear, ordering parts, then navigating for parts. Some of these bikes are quite old. Um, so it's not a matter of, um, you know, off the shelf, so to speak, from a um, supplier of, you know, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki, whatever. It could go as far as overseas purchase um, through eBay, through other platforms to get the parts and then put these things together and have them as a, a good quality product. The thing is with old school stuff, vintage motocross, um, you know, coming across really good secondhand parts um, is one thing, but yet the price tag that's held to it as well. So sometimes you don't go OEM, it could be aftermarket things incorporated. It does take away the uniqueness and um, something of substance that is, you know, quality of standard, uh, which I totally get, but unfortunately, you know, a lot of people are out there trying to sniff around for parts to build things. So I'll, um, yeah, I'll get this bike in, show you guys what it's all about. We're gonna do a couple of um, breakdowns to see where this thing's actually at at the moment. Um, I did get this bike off a good friend. So shout out to Pete Tunney. Uh, this little thing is pretty cool. So we'll make a start. All right, guys, here we have a good old Little Red Devil CR80. Twin shock, uh, I haven't checked the frame number, but I'm quite sure it's 1980 by memory, which it sure is. Uh, where are we? So with this bike, what I'm gonna do is go through some basics to start anywho. So the thing is with these bikes, obviously they need to run with spark fuel compression. So first things first, we'll see if it's got spark. Um, the throttle cable is seized or it's actually seized on the slide in the carby. I haven't had the carby out. I've done nothing with this so far. So we'll make a start and we'll see if we can fire this thing up. Um, there's a couple of things we will check and we'll give it a go. Now what I'm gonna do is actually put a new spark plug in this because um, the other one didn't have the end on it. And what we're gonna do is earth this out, just on the cylinder head. All right, so we've put a new spark plug in. I've disconnected the kill switch just in case there is a, an earthing issue there. Um, we'll give it a couple of kicks and see if we can actually get something here in the spark. Sure is. All right, so the next thing I do with a spark plug out with, um, look, any bike that has, has the access, or having a plug out, you've got access, is to then go ahead and get a um, compression gauge. So what we want to do is work out cylinder pressure on this thing. So we'll screw it in and give it a couple of kicks. So next up, we'll give this thing a bit of a kick over and see how much pressure we can get into that gauge to determine what cylinder pressure we've got. Now the Kickstarter uh, gear is a little bit dodgy on this thing, so it will skip every now and then, but I'll kick it as much as I can to fill that gauge up and see what we've got. All right, stand up. So 
The goal is to get plenty of kicks in because you've got to fill that gauge up as well with some air. Alright, we'll see what we've come up with off how many times I've kicked it. So, by the looks of it, we've got 50, 60, 70, about 71 to 72 PSI of cylinder pressure. Now, with that, this thing should run. Um, I'm pretty excited to see if it runs, but next up is uh, checking the gearbox oil and also uh, getting onto that carburetor because uh, she's been weathered and sitting around for quite a while. So yeah, as you can tell, she's a cool old original jigger, but uh, it just needs a few things done to it to see if we can get it fired up. So we'll jump on the next thing. Another thing too, whilst pulling this carburetor out, just having a bit of an eye inspection on where things are at. Um, choke still works. The other thing is the intake boot for the uh, reed blocks cracked. Whether that's actually going to suck air through and lean out, I'm not too sure at the moment. Um, but these are just the things you got to inspect as you go. We'll see if we can get this carby slide out, which has come out. Um, a little bit dirty and everything else, but that's okay. We can live with that. The fuel line's hard as a rock. We're going to have to just cut that off. Jesus. So another thing that's got to be careful with is obviously being so old, um, we've got to make sure, like this boot's still got some forgiveness in it. Usually they're quite brittle, uh, hard, but that one looks like it can actually be salvaged. So getting this out, we just gotta be careful. If anything, I might even loosen off the air box to create some space there. Uh, and then we'll slide that carby out. So seat and a side panel is off. Um, we have got access now to get into the air box. So we'll see if we can get some movement out of this air box. If not, take the thing completely out so it's out of our way. Um, we also want to have as much room as possible. Bingo. So what we'll do with this is actually pull it down um, and inspect, give it a clean up. It's not gonna be perfect, but I think we'll be able to get this thing running with that carburetor. Airbox here, quite an old setup. Quite an old um, air filter that's in there too. All right, so we've got our carby. So what we're going to do is dismantle this thing completely, and I mean take out everything. Air fuel mixture, idle, um, bowl off, and we'll get in and see what's going on in here. These can be seized, but these are alright. So just bit by bit, lay your parts out. Obviously as you go, there's always an inspection process. Um, things are seized, worn, like these screws. The heads of them are a little bit stripped on the inner. Still can get to it though. Um, you know, and being such an old school setup, this thing too, even with the floats, um, you know, I will check the float height as we go. Um, these are quite an old school setup, a lot different than now. They are plastic, bit of a cobweb. Okay, so we've got main jet, motion tube, pilot jet. Um, we'll get all this apart. And uh, yeah, we'll have a bit of an inspection and see what's going on. As you pull apart, lay everything out as it has come apart. Um, one thing as well with jets is to look through 
the jet itself and see if it happens to be blocked. This carby's actually looking not too bad considering. Uh, here we go. No, only a different screwdriver. And that's another thing too. Make sure your screwdrivers seat into the jet itself. Uh, if they're loose, you can strip them and then obviously having a stripped head of anything there is no good. Clean. So we'll get our float out. Everything's actually looking pretty good for something that's what, 42 years old. actually in really good nick. Now the thing is too, with your molten tube, right, inspect all holes, everything. Make sure that you can see daylight through things that are meant to have daylight seen. And another thing too, with these older bikes, um, aren't so bad, but some of the newer stuff, you've got to watch out for O-rings in certain areas, things that will seal up so the carburetor doesn't uh, draw any air and lean out. These are quite basic, these old things, um, which is no drama at all. But anything, it does have a spring, so your idle obviously runs a spring for tension. Um, it butts hard up against the body itself. So there's a spring there for your air fuel mixture. And then just find some light have a look and just be careful when you're blowing air that if you do happen to have something in there just keep your finger close by um, so if it wants to pop out it hits your hand it doesn't fly across your workshop or your shed or yeah so what I'm going to do um, the only drama we've got is we're not going to be able to get that choke out because the plastic's broken well not at the minute so what I'm going to do is actually place this into a container with petrol and allow the fuel just to break down any oil debris Dirt. like this thing's obviously got some stuff on it um, we'll give that a clean up and see how we go all right now I don't have any gloves in the workshop at the moment so I'm happy to get some fuel on my hands because I live and breathe this stuff anyway what's the difference get in my veins fuel so basically I've allowed the carby components to sit in a bit of brake clean just whilst I was out and about um, and it has pulled off quite a lot of junk off the body of the carby itself. Um, I've actually just tipped all that out of what was in there. Uh, and I've now gone ahead and put some just 91 unleaded fuel in here as a cleaning agent. Um, these brushes aren't overly stiff. This is more just to get any of the, the junk off the body itself um, to clean it up. We are gonna obviously blast this body at some point make it a lot better but right now I just really want to try and get as much crap off here as possible so we'll go through that uh, and then obviously once that's done I'll get all the internal components out all the jets and motion tube everything else blow a bit of air onto that um, and get everything out of that that we can so the thing is with doing carby or cleaning you will need like a variety of different bristle um style brushes you know harder sort of like a, a stiffer sort of um application because obviously some of these bits are a bit gritty and they're a bit of a hard to get to place like this end's working really well but we can't get it in everywhere um i'm a bit limited on brushes at the minute so just trying to sort of just clean this body up as much as possible um, it will be coming back off the bike, don't get me wrong, but there's no harm in just having a good scrub at it now to see what the condition of it's all about. This is coming up pretty good, just with the crevices in here, I can't exactly get into it all. Uh, but, with, um, when I blast this thing, it'll come up like brand new, so we'll just do the best we can. And the thing is too, with blasting guys, like you don't want to be mixing, um, you know, a lot of this out of body material into your cabinet. Um, so if you're doing like a soda blast, sand blast, vapor blast, you wanna try and get rid of as much 
off your uh, materials as possible, otherwise it can contaminate what you've got and you don't want to be having poor finishes coming out of your, your machine. So obviously maintenance is another thing with that. But anyway, I'll give these a clean up. That's coming up pretty good as we speak. Um, I'll screw this back together and we're going to get some fuel on this bike and I haven't checked the gearbox at all yet, but once I have, um, we'll give this thing a run and see what we can do. And uh, yeah, hopefully she fires up. So everything's cleaned up. Uh, what we're gonna do now is run a bit of compressed air through the carburetor um, and through the jets and see if we can get this thing uh, back together. All right, tangled up there. So yet again, when you're doing this and you're blowing through obviously every bloody or orifice, I guess you could say the carby, just triple check that there's no O-rings. Um, the thing is too, I generally like to get onto, look, well, depending on diagram availability, but I get on the, like for this, you know, being a Honda, I get on and get a, a blown up diagram of a parts list when it comes to a carburetor and double check to see if there is anything available when it comes to O-rings or just a, just a washer that might butt up against the actual, um, you know, carby housing itself against a spring or whatever. So we'll go through this, clean everything out. It's also got overflows here, main jet molten tube, float needle, overflow. So we just want to make sure there's no gunk, gunk binded up anywhere. Don't need anything going back in and trying to block anything here. Uh, what else we got? Main. The cap you will get um, bits of you know residuey shit, build up a crap. Fuel likes to get quite uh, drawn to hardening out. So we just want to make sure that's all okay. So what I usually do is grab our jets, face it up to light so you can see through, make sure that there's no gunk build up, anything of debris that's gonna try and block off um, what we've got going on here, flow state wise for fuel. Um, another thing that you, with the float needle itself on a tip, like this is running a rubber tip, some run steel, but where it seats itself into the body of the, um, the carby, you do sometimes tend to get a bit of a lip, um, which when seated can allow fuel to get through, which is gonna cause obviously a, a, uh, a flooding state. Um, too much fuel is gonna be no good. And then obviously that should be spring relieved. Some are solid depending. So let's start putting this together. Um, what I'm gonna do to start with is actually put our float back on and check our float height. now. Once this is assembled, I'll just go through. Like I said, this is all gonna get restored. So we're just doing it as a, a bit of a feature to show what's going on here. Let's get the flow pin in. All right, so big thing is with this is looking for side to side movement. That's gonna alter the way the float is gonna operate. Um, now, what I do, uh, I'm just gonna try and get this in on a zoom or see if you guys can see, but I try and run the float, cause they're round. A lot of the new ones do run a flat edge and you run that um, adjacent to the flat part of your carby. With this being round, I'm actually looking at where the float pin itself is seated. We're probably gonna have to put this together um, and actually check in the bowl physically how much fuel's entering in. Uh, and what I do with that is put all your components back into the carby. Then we put the, the float bowl back on. Obviously everything's there. We tip it up and hold it. We allow fuel to go into the carburetor via an external auxiliary. So I'd have obviously a, a line, fuel line coming off and a bottle somewhere or something of set up to allow the fuel to get in and actually fill up in the carby. Then what you do is turn off the fuel, um, disconnect whatever it is, or you can still keep it connected, turn it off. No, I'd actually probably take it off. Uh, and then take it off and see how much fuel actually sits in the bowl. It should be about three quarters full. 
um, as a bit of a draw card on where to go, but I'll go into that in a moment. Okay, so from here moving forward, we do put our carburetor components back in. So we'll start with our center and work out. So we've got the main jet. Uh, I think we had that one, was that one? Just firm, nothing over tight, just because it's in here doesn't mean it has to be tensioned up till it wants to strip. Then we're going back to the pilot. Right, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hold your horses. I'm gonna have to nip that up and go back to here, sorry. Right. First things first. That needs to go in there. And then that goes on there. For fuck's sake. Fiddly little jigger. It's probably my fault for not actually having everything laid out correctly. All right. Okay, so here we have the idle. That can go into so far for now. And then what we will do is put in our air fuel mixture screw. Now what I will tend to do here, uh, I don't know the specs on where this is to be positioned at the minute, but I would like to say, um, just as a rule of thumb, go all the way until it just butts itself out, go half, one, one and a half, um, and just see how that goes. Okay, screw this back together. So like I said, just remember, this is only getting put together to see if the thing will operate, um, and it will be getting pulled apart to be overhauled. So we'll butt these back in. Old eBay going off. Yet again, more parts. Just firm, don't over tighten. People go, oh God, we're gonna try and strip these things out because it's full of fuel and if it happens to leak, we're catching on fire, just firm, all right? So that carby's come up not too bad considering of something that's 42 years old. So what we'll do next is I'll butt up that uh, drain plug and I will then inspect the carby slide needle um, and make sure that slides up and down in here okay. We'll see what, what goes on there. All right, so other things that you inspect on the way, uh, obviously the condition of the actual slide itself, if it's discolored, um, abrasive in any way, whatever, um, just inspect obviously the needle itself. It has got a bit of crap on here, which I would suspect could create this thing to stick a little bit. So what I'll do is put a bit of brake clean on a rag, give that a bit of a go over. What we can do is pull the spring out. We're actually, oh, hang on, we are coming apart here. So we'll grab our uh, needle out first, Let's put him down here, and then what we'll do is we will unbutt the um, cable itself, and then we'll remove the actual slide we'll take out. So inspect the, uh, the actual material. This is quite abrasive here. Um, we'd be able to get away with it, but the thing is we want to make sure there's no sharp edges essentially there. Um, another thing to look at as well is the spring. Now people go, well, what do you need to look at? So you view it from different angles and see if it's been rubbing anywhere and it's actually been dragging where it will thin that out because with that thinning out of the spring we're going to lose tension on it um, which could, could cause it to snap, um, get stuck, jam the throttle on um, but most of all it's not going to push your carby uh, slide itself back down into its seating position off throttle. With the jet needle it's quite discoloured um, whether you can see that but there is a lot of old sticky residue on it that's going to allow that to stick in the uh, emulsion tube uh, into the body or well, not the body itself but actually in where it, it seats itself back down in the carby on uh, idle or shut off 
Um, the actual clip position itself is down one, which is lifted up that needle, which will give it more fuel through the main. We're not going to worry about adjusting that today, but we will give this a clean up and allow that to uh, slide in our carby body correctly so it's not sticking and it won't cause any issues. The last thing I want to do is start this thing up and the thing just revs its absolute head off. Because, um, yeah, whether the kill switch works or not, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm probably best to chuck it in gear and let it do a couple of backflips. So, what we need to do is have some brake clean, which I don't have much left in here, but what we'll do is just have a bit of a spray on these components. There's probably more air in here than anything, but we'll give it a little douse. Grab a rag, preferably something that's not too dirty. Clean would be better. For now, we'll just do this. So, that is quite sticky um, on that jet needle. So, what I'm going to do, um, I might have to soak that in some fuel because, yeah, that's where our issue was on the cable. It was getting stuck. Uh, so we'll do that first and then we'll um, assemble and make sure this thing's sliding in itself okay. This is quite old. You know, going back, how many times it's been up and down in a motorcycle? It is quite um, pitted, so the chroming on itself is starting to get a little bit funky. Um, but like I said, for what we're doing at the minute, this is okay. If I do find another one, um, that's absolutely fine but we can get away with this for now. Even a really fine, 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 like a 2000 wet and dry would be okay just to give it a little touch up, nothing too much. Uh, but yeah, there's a bit of pitting and stuff on that. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is grab, um, it's a bit more of a coarse, like wet and dry, so to speak. But what I will do is just very lightly, very lightly have tension on this. Um, because if I grab too hard on it, it uh, we don't want to be taking like material off. We just want to clean that up um, to remove excess baggage that's on there. Just build up of gunk from sitting around. Old fuel definitely does it. Um, but yeah, we'll just very gently just go over that. All right, I think we're looking pretty good for that. That'll allow it to at least have its uh, sliding availability without getting jammed. I think we're looking pretty good. So Now, I've noticed on this, um, spin this around a fraction. It's not, you're not going to be able to see this on camera, but here there is actually a section that's starting to thin out. Um, and obviously as it binds up and everything, it's going to be dragging as the throttle's going. Over time, um, it just thins out and thins out and it does wear, which like I said, takes the tension out. It potentially can become weak and snap. Um, I'll definitely be looking for another one of these when the restoration's going ahead. All right, so with the assembly complete, um, I've just put everything in. I'm using my finger on here just as a preload, but going up, it's snapping shut which is okay. So I'm happy to put fuel on that and give this thing a run and see what it does. All right, so moving forward, we will assemble our carburetor slide uh, back onto uh, the cable. So reverse as you've come off. Make sure things are located inside the slide correctly. So you also got a plate there that holds your uh, jet needle down, uh, what not, depending on what you're working on. Now always remember your shallow side groove is for your idle. The other one is for obviously a indicator to keep things straight. And then obviously when you put it in, you will see um, the slide butt out uh, to the bottom, right? As if you're at idle. Screw your cap on, and then what we can do is pull that through there so with no excess, and then put him on. Now on the front boot uh, for the reed block, there usually is a recess there which allows a part of the, it's a, just a little nick uh, or locator on the carby that usually slides into it. On this, not so much. All right, and back to 
tightening up. So the thing is we don't try, well, we definitely don't want air leaks on the front side of the carby to the engine. That'll lean this thing out, it'll rev up. So you could do that anyway, I'm not sure, because obviously we've got some bits of cracking around here. This is very, very old stuff. Uh, but like I said, this is just to run it and we'll see how it goes. All right, next up what we'll do is organize a fuel line. Um, now I did say before that I wanted to check the float height. From what I've seen, it looks all right. Like I said, I just want to clean this, get it back together, see if it runs, and then we're going in for a, a pull down and inspection and you know, a rebuild and restoration. So I'll find a bit of fuel line for here. We'll hook right, that up. So I've just grabbed some fuel line off um, one of my YZ250 carbs, just overflow uh, line. So we'll plumb that up to the tank and that should do, that should be adequate for what we're doing. Um, I did have to put a bit of heat on the other side to get it on the carby with a flamethrower just to soften it up a little bit and let it get over the, uh, over the uh, carby uh, inlet itself. So, all right, let's go to the next stage. All right, so what we'll do next is use some tip top oil. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is just put a liter roughly into this so I'll pop in about yay much just under 30 mils that's absolutely fine we'll put a bit of fuel in there all right so just moving forward uh, I could get the tank cap off to put some fuel in the tank so what I've done is just bodged up a system on the side I don't recommend it uh, but just to feed a bit of fuel down into that carby to give it a kick in the guts and see what it can do um, so yeah don't don't do this at home, like it's just, it's only a one off just to get this thing running. And then uh, after that's getting stripped down. So we're just doing this as a, a tutorial, uh, but that is not included uh, in your own scope of works at home, unless you have to, but make sure it's safe. Don't have a hot engine spilling fuel everywhere. We've got to be careful with that. All right, next up, bit of fuel. Um, I've just mixed this at whatever. Yet again, only for entertainment purposes only. Just give this a crack and see what happens. Anything could happen. No way. We are blasting fuel out everywhere. thing was started last I've got no idea about its history but it did start and it actually ran not bad for what it is wow game on let's get on to the next lot of vlogs and get this thing stripped down and start doing its restoration <laughs> 